Set the light, set the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Set the light, set the light, set the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to Send the light and let its radiant beams light the world forevermore. We have had the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. Spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The book of the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 35. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go into the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jeazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Maasiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. 
but all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he hath charged us, to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed, but we have dwelt in tents, and have obeyed, and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land, that we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem, for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearkened not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father which he commanded them, but this people hath not hearkened unto me, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard, and I have called unto them, but they have not answered. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he hath commanded you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand before me forever. Chapter 36 And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up, I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore go thou, and read in the robe which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord, and will return every one from his evil way. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord hath pronounced against this people. And Baruch the son of Neriah did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. Then read Baruch in the book the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord in the chamber of Gemariah the son of Shaphan the scribe in the higher court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the ears of all the people. When Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord, then he went down into the king's house, into the scribe's chamber, and lo, all the princes sat there, even Elishama the scribe, and Eliah the son of Shemaiah, and Elnathan the son of Achbor, and Gemariah the son of Shaphan, and Zedekiah the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Then Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. Therefore all the princes sent Jehudai the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalemiah, the son of Cushai, unto Baruch, saying, Take in thine hand the roll wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come. So Baruch the son of Neriah took the roll in his hand, and came unto them. And they said unto him, Sit down now, and read it in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ears. 
Now it came to pass, when they had heard all the words, they were afraid, both one and other, and said unto Baruch, We will surely tell the king of all these words. And they asked Baruch, saying, Tell us now, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? Then Baruch answered them, He pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. Then said the princes unto Baruch, Go, hide thee, thou and Jeremiah, and let no man know where ye be. And they went into the king into the court. But they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elisha the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elisha the scribe's chamber. And Jehudi read it in the ears of the king, and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife, and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth, until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. Nevertheless, Elnathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. But the king commanded Jeramiel the son of Hamalek, and Sariah the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah the son of Abdeel, to take Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord hid them. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, after that the king had burned the roll and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take thee again another roll, and write in it all the former words that were in the first roll, which Jehoiakim the king of Judah hath burned. And thou shalt say to Jehoiakim king of Judah, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast burned this roll, saying, Why hast thou written therein, saying, The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land, and shall cause to cease from thence man and beast? Therefore, Thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim king of Judah, He shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat, and in the night to the frost. And I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and upon the men of Judah, all the evil that I have pronounced against them. But they hearkened not. Then took Jeremiah another roll, and gave it to Baruch the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim king of Judah had burned in the fire. And there were added besides unto them many like words. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We're asking, Lord, you speak to every heart. And your word will benefit and prosper in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight, we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I was studying from verse 1. Let's start by reading some selected verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that she may prophesy. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it tells us, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men 
to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. Verse 5, in verse 5, it tells us, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive a divine. From verse 12, in verse 12 it tells us, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. The passage we are looking at today speaks of prophesying, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. When a believer saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Spirit, receives the gifts of the Spirit, included in them the prophecy, and speaking in tongues and prophesying. We need to understand the private use of the gift and the public use of the gift. In privacy, we can speak in tongues. When we come to the public worship, if there is speaking in tongues, there must be interpretation. Speaking in tongues plus interpretation equals prophecy. And the prophecy is a message from God that gives us edification. So today we're looking at the message, the peculiar power of prophetic preaching, the peculiar power of prophetic proclamation. Three things we're looking at in the study. Number one, the purposeful ministry of prophets to edification. The ministry of the prophet or prophecy in the church is purposeful and it is to edify the believer, edify the members of the church, edify the church. Number one then, the purposeful ministry of prophets to edification. Number two, the profitable message of prophets with explanation. The profitable message of prophets with explanation. Number three, the passionate messengers with power and endowment. When we have the Holy Ghost saturating us, immersed into the Holy Ghost, and we have that power of the Holy Ghost upon us, is the endowment of power, and it makes us passionate messengers of the Lord. The passionate messengers with power and endowment. Number one now is the purposeful ministry of prophets to edification. First Corinthians chapter 14. We're reading from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. But rather, that he may prophesy. Verse 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh unto men. Not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be each in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Then in verse 3, But he that prophesieth, speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. In verse 4, it tells us, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edify, edifieth the church. Verse 5 now, in verse 5, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he 
that prophesieth than he that speaketh in tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. We're talking of the ministry of the prophet. And that ministry of the prophet is telling us about what it does, the accomplishment that it has, and the edification, the exhortation, and the comfort it brings to the church. As we talk of the ministry of the prophet, let's look at Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12, we're reading from verse 10. In Hosea chapter 12, reading from verse 10, it says, I have also spoken by the prophets, and have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Here is the Almighty God saying, I have spoken. I have revealed my mind. I've given the message by the prophets. And then in the last line, it talks of the ministry of the prophets. What's the purpose and what's the use of that ministry of the prophet? Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Their deliverance, their redemption, their salvation, and their escape from slavery was by the ministry of the prophet. And then it says, the latter part of that verse 13, and by a prophet was he preserved, brought out, delivered, redeemed by the ministry of the prophet, and then preserved by the ministry of the prophet. So I want to find out from the Old Testament and New Testament the ministry of the prophet, edifying, exhorting, and comforting. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the excelling ministry of former prophets. That is the prophets of the Old Covenant, the prophets of the Old Testament, the excelling ministry of those former prophets, Number two, the ensnaring ministry of false prophets. As there were faithful prophets, there were also false prophets, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and in the last days, in the days in which we are living today. And the Bible has made that very clear, the ensnaring ministry of false prophets. Number three is the edifying ministry of faithful prophets. The prophets that speak the mind of God, the word of God, and they give the word as the Lord has given, and then he declares that word unto us, bringing conviction, confession, and conversion unto the Lord, and the consecration and commitment of members of the church, a divine ministry of faithful prophets. Number one, the excelling ministry of former prophets. Already we have read from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verses 1 to 5. Let's look at verse 12 now. In verse 12, it tells us, Even so ye, for as much as ye as zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. As we proclaim the word, as we prophesy, as we preach the word of the Lord, the intention and the purpose is to edify the church in uh, Zechariah chapter 1 reading from verse 3 it tells us Zechariah chapter 1 in verse 3 therefore say thou unto them thus says the Lord of hosts turn ye unto me says the Lord of hosts and I will turn unto you says the Lord of of us. And then in verse 4, he tells us in verse 4, Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but they did not hear nor hearken 
unto me, says the Lord. In that verse 4, you'll find the words former prophets. All the prophets that came before Zechariah, all the prophets that came in the Old Covenant, Old Testament. What was their message? The summary of their message is turn now from your evil ways and turn from the evil doings but then it said they did not hack in jeremiah chapter 7 reading from verse 23 jeremiah 27 chapter 7 verse 23 but this he commanded i them saying obey my voice and i will be your god that's the message of the servants of god of those former prophets and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well unto you. Verse 25. In verse 25, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even said unto you, all my prophets, all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them and their message was that they will turn from their evil ways and seek the lord look at now the second point the second point is the ensnaring ministry of false prophets ensnaring ministry of false prophets matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 11 and verse 12 in Matthew chapter 24, verse 11, And many false prophets shall arise, shall rise, and shall deceive many. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. In those days, there are false prophets. In the last days, there will be false prophets. And Jesus warned the church, the apostles, and the disciples, that there shall arise false prophets, and they shall deceive many and then in verse 24 verse 24 tells us it says for there shall be for there shall arise false christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they will they shall deceive the very elect it tells us in matthew chapter 7 Reading from verse 15, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, still warning the believers and warning the church, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. It says externally, they might appear smooth and nice and wise and profitable, because outwardly they will be like they're wearing sheep's clothing but then inwardly they'll be ravening destructive murderous wolves then in verse 16 it says you shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns of figs of thistles it says in verse 20 verse 20 it says wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. They prophesy, they proclaim, they preach, but the preaching, the proclamation, and the prophecy will not change the hearts of the hearers. The false prophets might prophesy, but their message will not have a transforming effect or transforming power. They might even work miracles in verse 21. It says in verse 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 22 tells us many will say, many prophets, false prophets, many prophets, fake prophets, many prophets, deceptive prophets, Many prophets, those who are misinterpreting, misapplying the word of God, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
and in the name I've cast out devils, and in the name I've done many wonderful works. Then verse 23 tells us, it says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That means they were never born again. I never knew you. They never belonged to the kingdom of God. They never had the experience of being born again. And the Spirit of God never convicted them or they never yielded to the conviction of their sin. They never confessed their sins. They never forsook their sin. They were still living in sin while they were saying they were prophesying or preaching or proclaiming. And there was no evidence of conversion of being joined unto the Lord in their lives. They were religious, but they were not righteous. The Lord said, I will proclaim, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. First John chapter 4. In First John chapter 4, we're reading from verse 1. <clears throat> Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world, many, not a few. Many false prophets in every country, in every part of the world, many false prophets have gone out into the world. And then it says in verse 6, verse 6 tells us, We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The false prophets have the spirit of error, the spirit of falsehood. The spirit of falsehood and false doctrine. But apart from former prophets, apart from the false prophets, there are faithful prophets. Number three now. Number three, the edifying ministry of faithful prophets. The prophets who are faithful are the ones that edify the church. They're the ones that carry out the great commission. They're the ones that bring out the word of exhortation. And they're the ones that bring out the words of conviction. That will bring sinners out of their sin and bring them into the kingdom. They're the people that will preach and then believers will be steadfast and stable and secured in the kingdom of God. And they will have the grace to abide in the kingdom of God by the obedience of their heart, of their lives, to the word of God. And they edify the members in making them to grow, making them to mature, and making them to move on in the ministry of soul winning and helping all the people in the church, members and ministers, that they will go and excel in the kingdom and in the ministry the Lord has called them to the edifying ministry of faithful prophets. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verse 3, But he that uh, prophesieth speaketh unto men. He that prophesieth, he comes in the public and he speaketh unto men. The men may be in the church. They may be outside the church. Anywhere they are gathered to hear the word of God, he that prophesieth, the faithful prophet, speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. It tells us in verse 12, it says in verse 12, even so, ye for as much as ye as zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. As you preach, edify. 
as you prophesy edify as you proclaim the mind of god edify the church verse 17 in verse 17 for though for thou verily givest thanks well but the other is not edified if you only speak in tongues or if you speak in languages that people cannot hear or if you speak the, the language that people hear but is so fast or is so modeled up and is not distinct and people cannot understand then you cannot edify the church but you so speak you so proclaim you so preach and you so prophesy that you may edify look at verse 19 in verse 19 yet in the church i had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice i might teach others also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue in verse 26 he says in verse 26 how is it then brethren when ye come together every one of you has a psalm has a doctrine has a tongue has a revelation has an interpretation he said whatever it is we have let all things be done unto edifying he wants us to so speak as to edify the people were speaking to verse 31 in verse 31 for ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn that all may be comforted ye may all prophesy all declare the mind of god all proclaim the mind of the lord that all may learn that sinners who hear will learn the saints who hear will learn members who hear will learn non-members who are coming for the first time will learn those who need to pick up the word of salvation repentance redemption by the lord will learn and those who need to grow in the grace of god will learn for ye all may prophesy proclaim and preach one by one that all may learn that all may be comforted it tells us in luke chapter 1 reading from verse 70 luke chapter 1 reading from verse 70 as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets the faithful prophets are the holy prophets the faithful prophets are the prophets that know the lord for personal experience of salvation and they know the lord in personal experience of sanctification holiness of heart holiness of life and the adjective that qualifies them is that they are holy prophets and then the lord spake by the mouth of those holy prophets which have been since the world began what did they say verse 71 in verse 71 that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant 73 the oath which is where to our father abraham what the holy prophets did was to bring the word of the covenant that the heavenly father had spoken to our father abraham or the other covenants he made with the people of israel and the prophets will come and remind the people of god the terms of the covenant the condition of the covenant and the benefits of the covenant they reminded the people of god and those prophets still remind us of the covenant he made with her father abraham in verse 74 that he would grant unto us 
that we've been delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. The prophets and the preachers who are faithful to the word of God, they come to remind us of the redemption of the Lord. How we'll be saved, how we'll be redeemed, how we'll be brought out of the slave market of the devil. And then we will serve the Lord without fear. What causes fear? The fear of God, the tormenting fear, is a sin we have committed. And when they show us the way of salvation, and our sins are forgiven, and we are redeemed, and we are reconciled with God, there is no fear, tormenting fear, of the punishment of our sin anymore. Now we can serve God without the fear of ultimate, final, eternal judgment. In verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. The prophets, if they are faithful prophets, if they are holy prophets, if they are prophets that will edify the church, they will remind us that Christ has died, that redemption has come. And now we can be saved from the hands of our enemies and we can have the grace and the strength and the influence of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit to serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our lives. That's the experience of sanctification after the experience of salvation we are saved our external sins are taken away our external sins are forgiven and now we're sanctified and not only that we're now able to live righteously before men we're able to live in holiness and righteousness before god not only for one day one week or a short period of time we're able to live in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our life. I pray the Lord will affect each and every life in Jesus' name. I can't hear the amen. amen. Number two now. The profitable message of prophets with explanation the profitable message of the prophets with explanation in first corinthians chapter 14 reading from verse 6 now brethren if i come unto you speaking of tongues what shall it what shall i profit you except i shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine here paul the apostle led by the spirit of god explains to us that if we are in the church and we're speaking in tongues how do we profit the people if they do not understand what we are saying? If we are preaching in our local language and we are preaching to foreigners who do not understand our local language, how are we going to be of benefit to the nation or to the foreigners if we are so zealous and we want to preach and all we can preach and say is in our own local vernacular let's say for example you're a yoruba man and then uh, somebody is asking a question and then in asking that question in yoruba language you are answering the question in yoruba language and we're transmitting that 
to nations and to foreigners that do not understand the Yoruba language, how do you profit the people? You might have a good message, you might have good understanding, but if what you are preaching is not reaching out to the hearts of the people, you will not edify the people. How do we do it then? Speak in the language that the people who hear you can understand. Then you will speak either you are giving revelation, or you are giving knowledge, or you are prophesying, or you are teaching doctrine. If you speak in English, speak it in English. And then the interpreters all over, anywhere they are, can interpret that English unto the people and everybody will benefit. That's telling us that whatever we're doing, you're singing, you're preaching, anything you're doing, do it to edification. Let there be proper explanation. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it's telling us here, Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding. I need to understand what I'm saying. The people I'm speaking to, they need to understand what I am saying in the church before the congregation amidst the people of God. I'd rather speak five words with my understanding. And when I've spoken with my understanding and with the understanding of the people, then I can keep quiet and go and sit down than speaking 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the distinction of preaching message of the prophets the message that pricks the heart the message that brings conviction on the heart the message that wakes up the sleeping sinners who are sleeping in their sin the people who are dozing over their evil the message that pricks the heart that convicts the heart that wakes up the sinner and sends them on their knees and praying and confessing their sins so that they can be saved. And the message must be distinct. The distinction of the preaching message of the prophets. Number two, the declaration of the penetrating message of preachers. Preachers are not to entertain sinners. Preachers are not to entertain members of the church were to so speak that the Lord by his word will discover everyone where they are and then they'll come out of their hidden places, of their secret places and seek the face of the Lord declaring the message that penetrates the hearts of the people. Number three, that this mystification that is it's like a mystery and you demystify you unravel you expose you explain you apply that it will no more be a mystery it will be meaningful in the hearts of the people who are hearing the clarification of the pungent message of persuaders we come to persuade them, we come to convince them that they come out of their sins and they come to the Savior and they embrace the Savior and allow the grace of the Savior to have impact in their lives. Number one, the distinction of the preaching message of prophets. It tells us in um, Isaiah chapter 58, I say, 58, we're reading from verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a prophet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. The preacher, the pastor, the prophet must be so clear, 
must be so distinct that the voice like that of a prophet will so sound that it will show the people their transgression and show the house of Jacob their sin. It tells us in Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Search the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. It says the prophet should speak out so loud and so clear and so distinct that the house of Jacob or the religious people of the land will hear and they will know they have transgressed the commandments and the law of the Lord. In verse 2, it says, Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Verse 3, that same Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. He says, you make it very clear to those who are living in sin, even though they call themselves the children of Abraham, the children of Jacob, the covenant people of God, if they're living in sin and they have cast off the good doctrine and teaching and the law of God, tell them that because of forsaking the Lord, the enemy shall pursue them verse 12 in verse 12 i have reached unto him the great things of my law but they were counted as a strange thing he says tell them those are the people that i wanted them to turn away from their transgression and they count repentance as a strange thing those are the people after saving them, I want to circumcise their heart. I want to sanctify them. I want to purify them. I want them to be as holy because I am holy. They count holiness as a strange thing. I want them separated from the Gentiles, from the heathen, from the idol worshippers. I want them separated from the people who are living in idolatry and abomination. But they counted that word of salvation, of sanctification, of separation. They counted that as a strength thing. But don't you, prophet, keep quiet because of that. Raise your voice like a trumpet and tell them and show them they need to come back unto the Lord. And then the word of the Lord, spoken faithfully by the Spirit of God, will bring conviction and preaching into their hearts. Acts of the Apostles, reading from chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified direct whom ye have crucified confrontational whom ye have crucified told them pointedly and told them persuasively you are great sinners you crucified and you slew and you killed the very son of God our Savior, Lord, and Redeemer. But the Lord has made him Lord and Christ. In verse 37, verse 37, now, when they heard this, they were preached in their heart, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Conviction had come. When we proclaim the word of the Lord, 
we should proclaim to the point conviction will come to the hearers and then they'll be willing to get saved asking men and brethren preachers proclaimers of the word what shall we do verse 38 in verse 38 peter said unto them repent turn away from your sin get out of darkness come out of evil and come into the grace and to the salvation of the lord we're looking at number two there now number two is the declaration of the penetrating message of preachers the declaration of the penetrating message of preachers first corinthians chapter 14 we're reading from verse 9 so likewise ye except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood how shall it be known what is spoken for ye shall speak into the air it says the people that have the practice of speaking an unknown language an unknown tongue in the congregation of people that don't understand them and the words they say are not understood it says how shall you be know what you are speaking for you shall speak into the air and if you are preaching the same way and you're speaking a word you're speaking a language not understood by the people you waste their time you waste your time and you speak into the air and your goal is not to convert the air transform the air or transform the atmosphere if you want to transform people speak to the hearts of the people what the people can understand declare the penetrating word of the proclamation of the word of god in verse 10 it tells us in verse 10 there are it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification without meaning every language in the world all the voices in the world have meaning signification in verse 11 therefore if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh unto he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. The point is, speak clearly that the people who hear may understand, and they can easily take that word, they understand to the Lord in prayer if they are not converted they can confess their sins and then turn away from their sins and be born again if they are saved but not sanctified they can hear the word of god clearly and understand they need this next experience and consecrate their lives to the lord and be sanctified if they are saved and sanctified they so understand the word of god that there is the power of the Holy Ghost, it shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And they can go to God and desire and demand and ask and pray for that power baptism immersion in the holy ghost and the power comes on them and then they can take power with the great commission with effectiveness it tells us in romans chapter 15 reading from verse 19 romans chapter 15 verse 19 through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem 
and round about unto Illyricum. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Preach it. Proclaim it. Make the people to understand the good news of Christ. And the good news that he died, that was buried, and that he rose again for justification, for redemption, for our salvation. In verse 20, Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. In verse 21, verse 21, But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. They shall see, they shall hear, they shall understand. Number three, this is the clarification, the discernment of the pungent message of persuaders. We come to the people as preachers, as prophets, as pastors, as teachers of the word. And it is not only to speak, enjoy ourselves speaking. It is to make the word penetrate in their hearts and to persuade them that they shall run away, escape from the judgment to come. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men If you know that the men you are speaking to they are the brink of falling into a fire They are the brink, they are very near the pit of destruction You'll not be entertaining them, knowing the terror of the Lord, knowing the eternal judgment, the eternal torment, the eternal suffering, the eternal pain that sinners will go through everlasting from the time they die, if they die in their sin, until throughout eternity. Knowing that terror and torment and suffering and pain that they will go through, you want them and you persuade them, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also I make manifest in your consciences. That's why in verse 20, in verse 20, now then, we, we preachers, we, we prophets, we, we proclaimers of the gospel, we, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's church. Be ye reconciled unto God. Be ye reconciled unto God. Let's say, for, for example, there's enmity between A and B, between one man and another man, and you want to reconcile them. And they have arguments against each other. A speaking against B. And B speaking against A. And you want to reconcile both of them. You have to speak clear enough, distinct enough to persuade both of them. And then reconcile them. Man is at enmity against God. God is an enmity against sinful man. 
and God speaks against the sinful man. And the sinful man is opposed unto God. And you want to reconcile the sinful man unto the holy God. You pray to God in such a fervent way, in such a convincing manner. You pray unto God in such a persuasive manner, reminding him that Christ has died for the sinner. And then God says, yes, I'll forgive him if he will repent. And then you have to speak to the sinner in such a persuasive way that if he continues in his sinfulness, in his transgression, in his rebellion, in his disobedience, there will be an eternal judgment and he will suffer forever and ever. And you convince him and you persuade him to the point he's willing to repent, he's willing to turn to the Lord, and now the man can be reconciled unto God through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the passionate messenger with power and endowment. The passionate messengers were power and endowment. It tells us in First Corinthians chapter 14, reading from verse 20. First Corinthians 14, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice, the children, but in understanding the men. In verse 21, it says, In the law it is written, With men of all the tongues and men of all the lips will I speak unto these people. When it says all the tongues, that means strange tongue, unknown tongue, foreign tongue unto them. When it says all the leaves, it's talking of foreign leaves, strange leaves unto them. With men of other languages, I will speak unto these people. But look at what follows, and yet for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. That's the limitation of the speaking in tongues. That's the limitation of that foreign language. That's the limitation of a language not understood by the people we're talking to. Yet for all this, they will not hear me, says the Lord. Verse 22. In verse 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying service not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Verse 23. In verse 23, therefore the whole church may come together into one place and all speak in tongues all speak in foreign languages, all speak in unknown tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say ye are mad? In verse 24, but if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is convicted of all, he is persuaded of all, and he is judged of all. Verse 25. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, his hidden sins are exposed, his bad habits are exposed. 
and the things that will bring judgment upon him they are exposed in his life and thus at the sixes of his eyes made manifest so falling down on his face he will worship god and report that god is in you of a truth we need to speak the word so clearly that the people who hear will turn to the lord turn away from their sins and repent luke chapter 24 verse 47 in luke chapter 24 verse 27 and that repentance a remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's the commission, that's the commandment, that's the thing he has commanded us to do and speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, in foreign language that people don't understand will not achieve the purpose. We have to speak in language that people understand and if there are people who don't understand there, we have to have interpreters so that the word can come unto the people. So that the word of repentance, the word of turning away from transgression will be clear in the hearts and the minds of the people for the forgiveness, remission of their sins among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purified messengers with a demanding proclamation. Number two, the peculiar messengers with a demonstrated, demonstrable prophecy. Number three, the prevailing messengers over discerning people. Number one, the purified messengers with a demanding uh, proclamation. Look at that again in First Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding, in the understanding of scriptures, be not children, in the understanding of a commission, be not children, in understanding of acceptable worship, Worshipping the Lord, be not children. In the understanding of our calling, a high calling, a holy calling, and heavenly calling, in the understanding of our calling, of your calling, be not children. Brethren, be not children in the demands of the Lord. What it will take to get us to heaven and make the rapture, be not children. How be it malice? Be ye children, but in understanding, be men. In First Peter chapter two, we're reading from verse one. First Peter chapter two, verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, you are saved, laying aside all malice, your claim sanctification, laying aside all malice. You have the nature of God, the mind of Christ, you are following after the Lord, and you are listening for the trumpet sound when the trumpet shall wake us up and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive shall be joined together caught up together with them into the sky wherefore then lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all envies and all evil speaking then in verse 2, it says, Desire as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. If you're going to grow, that will mean that you shed off all the habits, all the lifestyle of childishness, all the lifestyles 
of spiritual babes and then you become matured you're growing up you grow in experience you grow in your knowledge of god and you grow in your intimacy with god and your life today is better brighter and higher and holier than your life yesterday as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby in verse 3 it tells us if so be ye have tasted that the lord is gracious lay all the malice aside ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 let all bitterness all all shades of bitterness let all bitterness all kinds of bitterness let all bitterness in the heart in the mind in the language all bitterness and wrath and anger is speaking to all the children of god is speaking to those who claim to be born again is speaking to those who have relationship with the lord and they're reconciled with god it's not i am saved now so i can get angry i can strive i can fight when i get sanctified then i get rid of anger not at all speaking to all the children of god and it says if we are born again if we are children of god the things that make you angry analyze them was that the voice of somebody the action of an ignorant person or the habit of a person who does not have control over himself or the selfishness of a self-centered person why should that make you angry it's like you're angry because a fish is swimming according to its nature it's you're like angry because a bird is flying according to its nature. It's like you're angry because a sinner is sinning according to its nature. It's like you're angry because a person who has not been cleansed of self is self-centered according to its nature. That shouldn't make you angry if you are saved, you are a child of God. Analyze what makes you angry and then come to God and say, God, I need your grace that whatever people say and whatever people do, they act according to their level, according to their understanding, according to their sinfulness. Therefore, as they act out their nature, I will not be angry. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and when that is put away there's a vacuum that is created inside there you must feel that vacuum look at verse 32 in verse 32 and be ye kind one to another you cannot be kind and angry at the same time you cannot be loving and angry at the same time. You cannot be happy, joyful, and angry at the same time. You cannot be smiling, real wide smile, smiling and angry at the same time. Replace the wrath, replace the malice, replace the anger, and replace the clamor with the fruit of the Spirit. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you it will be done in Jesus name number two number two is the peculiar messengers with demonstrated prophecies demonstrable prophecies as I read this I need to maybe I should remind you the Old Testament prophets they were sometimes told to demonstrate their prophecies Another word for that demonstrate is to dramatize their prophecies. We're told in Isaiah, I got told Isaiah, he said, remove your shoe and remove your outer coat and walk naked before the children of Israel for three years. 
and tell them as I'm dramatizing it before you and I'm walking naked before you so will they take you to captivity and you walk naked before them God told um, he told Jeremiah he said take a bottle and go before the elders of the children of Israel and raise up that bottle and then as much it and throw it into the river and take a big stone wrap it up all the negative prophecies against them throw it into the river and with all the ripples and tell them that is how uh, Nebuchadnezzar Babylon will be thrown into the river they demonstrated they dramatized their message Ezekiel, come on here, uh, take wheat and barley and uh, grind everything together and put dung in it, what comes out of a man, and then eat it in the presence of the children of Israel. And Ezekiel said, Oh Lord, how can I do that? I've never taken anything unclean or polluted in my life. All right, I give the dung of a cow, of a bull, and mix it there, and then you eat it before them them lie down on one side for a long time in the presence of the children of Israel demonstrate your prophecy dramatize your prophecy and tell them this is how you will eat in the captivity those prophets were sometimes told to dramatize their messages and to demonstrate their messages so that the children of Israel will understand the pungency of the message that the prophets are given and then now we are to speak the message of the word of God in such a clear tone you know you cannot just fold your hand and stand rigid somewhere and then uh, preaching the word and demonstrating the word your head will not shake and your mouth will you know just uh, barely you cannot do that you have to show that you believe the message you're giving and then you demonstrate it before the people in first corinthians chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto these people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, says the Lord. And then in verse 22, it tells us, it says, Wherefore tongues I for a sign to signify something, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Verse 23, it then says, uh, it says, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and one speak, and all speak with tongues, they, and there come in one that or those that are unlearned or unbelievers will not say that they will not they say that ye are mad but you know the signs has given us is not only the sign of speaking in tongues if you look at mark chapter 16 reading from verse 17 it gives us other signs that we can demonstrate to kind of make the message very clear in the hearts of the people it says and this sign shall follow them that believe signs are coming signs and wonders are coming they are knocking at your door and as you open the door those signs and wonders will come to you in jesus name this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils devils are going to be cast out they shall speak with new tongues new tongues of power will come forth in verse 18 your amen is weak verse 18 they shall take up serpents all those serpentine spirits they'll be thrown away in jesus name and if they drink any deadly sin it shall not hurt them all the poison that you might have been lodging in your body at the mention of the name of jesus all that poison everything will go away in jesus name and they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover I can't hear the amen. 
this week you have heard from this Thursday until next week Tuesday signs and wonders for the needy I'll be a partaker I said I'll be a partaker and it's going to take place in Calabar, but then it's going to come to you anywhere you are. It will reach you in Jesus' name. Signs and wonders. For me. For you. For all of us in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And they went forth, and they preached everywhere. The Lord with them, and confirming the word, and confirming the word, and confirming the word, the signs following. Let somebody shout, Amen. Yeah. Number two, number number three is the prevailing messengers over discerning people. Prevailing messengers over discerning people. First Corinthians chapter 14, we're looking at verse 24. First Corinthians 14, 24. And if, they, and if all prophesy, and they are come in one, that believeth not, and one on lineage, he is convinced of all, is judged of all. Then verse 25, uh, it says, And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. When the word of God comes forth, and it prevails on the hearts of the people, whether they are sinners, or they are sick people, or they are suffering, or they are tormented, and the word comes to them, and the word is made personal, and the word of God takes effect in every one of their lives. If they are sinners, they will be saved. If they are saved, they will be sanctified. If they are sick, they will be healed. If they are tormented, they will be delivered. God will put testimony in every mouth and then they will have testimony. God is in your midst indeed. That's how the word is going to prevail in this coming program where we are going to have, which we are going to have. In your life, the word will prevail. In your invitees, the word will prevail. In those who are sick, the word will prevail. In those who are dead spiritually, the word will prevail. In the people who are backsliding, the word will prevail. In the people who don't know whether they are saved or not, they are here, they are there, and they are wondering, am I saved? How can I be sure? The word will prevail in their lives in Jesus' name. And then more than that in you. I said more than that in you. Every yoke in your life will be broken. More than that in you, every problem in your life will be solved. More than that in you, every tormenting power, anything that troubles your soul, your spirit, your mind, everything, the word will prevail upon them in Jesus' name. Your sight will be recovered your hearing will be recovered your life will be recovered new fire and new zeal and new power will come in your life the word will prevail in your life in jesus name all the confusion of the past and all the problems of the past everything will vanish away and then you will not have any problem after that program give me a good amen you will become a problem to the devil the devil will turn here and then meet you here you say in the name of jesus he will flee away and then he says what am i going to do with this young man this young woman you are a problem to me instead of you saying get out he will be telling you get out of my way get out of my way because you will become a problem to the devil. 
I, I, I will be a problem to the devil. Rise up and tell the Lord, rise up and tell the Lord that this program coming, uh, you're going to have the word of God and the word of God will prevail in your life. Open your mouth and tell the Lord you'll be a problem to the devil. You will prevail. The word of God and the power of God will prevail in your life and will prevail through you. New days are coming. Powerful days are coming and the word of God will do good in your life in Jesus name open that mouth open that mouth and say oh Lord I come oh Lord I come I'm going to receive like I received tonight the word of your power and the word of prophecy and the word that prevails and there'll be peculiar power peculiar power that comes with that prophetic preaching and everything in my life that should not be there everything will be blown up by the wind of the Spirit of God the word will prevail open your mouth and tell the Lord and be sure and be sure and be sure there's no confusion there's no doubt and there's no unbelief the word of God will prevail in your life have understanding have understanding Mali's be children. You don't believe the children. Let the word, the prophetic word, penetrate your heart. The message of the former prophets, the ministry of the former prophets, but the ministry of the prophets have brought them out. Let that ministry of the prophet bring you out today, out of darkness, out of captivity, out of slavery, out of powerlessness. Let the ministry of the prophet bring you out. And by the ministry of the prophets, they were preserved. That the ministry of the prophet, proclaiming the word, edifying the church, exhorting the believers, comforting the believers, encouraging the believers. Let that ministry of the prophet, of the preacher, of the pastor, edify you, preserve you. Preserve your Christian experience of salvation. Preserve your zeal. Let that ministry preserve your faith. Let it preserve your consecration. Let the ministry of the prophet. Preserve your conviction. Preserve your life. Preserve a positive impact, positive stance in your life. But the ministry of the prophet were brought out by the ministry of the prophet who are preserved. Be edified. Let the word you are hearing edify you. Like the food you eat nourish you. What of comfort? What a power, what of revelation, what of truth, what of life, what of holiness, 
word of righteousness let the word penetrate let the word influence you let the word transform you and let the evidence of that edification be known to everyone around you Let the word make you grow. Mali is all gone. Evil speaking all gone. Strife. Evil thoughts all gone. Envy. Jealousy all gone and your heart should not be in a vacuum you replace all those things after the anger is gone the malice is gone the evil speaking is gone after the gossiping is gone replace them with kindness gentleness Freedom from sin, strength, spiritual strength, maturity, living holy and righteous all the days of your life, bold, courageous. Not running away from every trial and temptation, but standing and putting those evil things on their own until you become a problem to the devil himself. And when you speak, be clear. Speak in words clear, distinct, persuasive that others will hear and discover themselves. Others will hear and repent. Others will hear and be convicted and be preached in their hearts. Speak in such a way you are not speaking to the air. You are speaking to the hearts of men and women. And they hear, they understand, and they will respond appropriately to the word they have heard. Clear the mystery. Clarify the mystery in the things you say. Be passionate, be persuasive, be pungent, pointed, penetrating. And the word you hear. Let it lead you to consecration. Lead you to prayer. Lead you to faith. Lead you to progress in spiritual things. And let the word have a permanent influence, impact in your life. Don't forget what you have heard. Let the word change you, transform you, make you to grow, make you matured. 
make you steadfast, make you a terror, a problem to the devil. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we have heard today. We pray that the prophet of this world will be permanent in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Spirit of the living God, we pray that we take everything we have heard, walk everything through in our hearts and our lives, in our spirits, and make us the mature, standing, steadfast, mighty, powerful, persuasive children of God, we ought to be in Jesus' name. Knock every fear out of our lives. Grant us the spirit of the conqueror. Bold, persuasive, standing, conquering children of God, in Jesus' name. The things that were problems to us before will come under our feet. We have overcome. We will keep on overcoming until the trumpet will sound. We will remain overcomers in Jesus' name. Every step of the way, make us Lord conquer us by your word by the spirit yeah. and we we'll pray lord will not be intimidated by anything that comes across our way yeah. but every spirit every sickness every sin every evil will come under our feet yeah. make every one of us conquer us by your word in jesus name and Lord, in this program that we're all going to participate in our signs and wonders for the needy, starting this Thursday, Lord, we pray every problem in every life of your people here and everywhere in church and online, every problem will be rolled away in Jesus' name. Power manifestation. Power demonstration. And the power that breaks every yoke will take place and everyone will benefit in Jesus' name. And you'll put testimony in every mouth. Signs and wonders for everyone. Signs and wonders for you. Signs and wonders for your family. Signs and wonders for all our invitees. Signs and wonders everywhere, globally, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know it is long. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 